Sarah? Hi, Gary. Nice Hi, Sarah. You. Yeah. Gary, you've talked a lot about specific events, and I just wondered if you had any tips for dealing with clients who don't seem to remember any negative specific events. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody whose symptoms were just a vague tiredness and depression for a long time. And yet, whenever I asked, you know, anything about when it started, he was like, well, you know, that's had a long, since maybe since I was a kid, but I had a nice childhood. My parents were great, I had a nice school, got on well with my sisters. And, you know, when did the um, tiredness start? Well, after I got divorced, but it was an amicable divorce, you know, <laughs> we're on good terms. Yeah. And it was very, I mean, actually, I've made some progress now, but it took a long time. And I'm wondering if you have any tips that, you know, would, would help working with that sort of case a bit quicker or more effective. Uh, yeah, yes, I have even more than tips, but, but Gwyneth is going to speak sharply at me if I speak for you. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> um, I'm going to address two things. One's the nice childhood. I hear that a lot. Okay. And there are a lot of people who have had what they consider to be a nice childhood. Parents were supportive and so on. Dig down underneath that. And I often find something else going on. And I have to be kind of general here because I don't know the specifics of your client's circumstances. But the child who was supportive, you know, or who was being supportive, to them, there's something missing with them. For example, maybe the mother and the father have achieved certain things in their life. Maybe one's a doctor and one's an athlete or something like that. And the child, even though they're being supported and loved, etc., the child says to themselves, I don't quite match up. I don't really fit in. But everything is nice and wonderful out there. But underneath all this, there's something wrong with me. I don't belong in this family. I don't fit in. Or something like that is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's usually some kind of undercurrent in there, which is underneath all of the outward appearance of a loving family. Okay. That's that's true because that eventually came out that the siblings all seemed very talented, but it took so long for her to come out with anything like that. And any questions I asked always seemed to be met with some yeah a positive answer or I can't remember, you know, yeah. just having okay. a bit of a blank. And I sort of wonder what questions to ask to to kind of start unearthing when someone is just systematically responding with, you know, everything was fine. Yeah. Well, a simple, you know, psycho speak question is, how does that make you feel? You know, you see that on TV, you know. How does it make you feel when your brother, you know, got all the accolades and you didn't get any? How did that make you feel when you tried to write a poem and nobody listened to it? I mean, these are questions, you know, that we can dig in deeper. The, the, and I, we're a little short on time here, uh, Sarah, but the other question had, had to do with the specific events. They can't remember them. Yeah. Very important topic. Yeah. A lot of people do that. They repress stuff, etc. Make one up. Have them make one up, which may seem fictitious, but it's not fictitious because it's coming out of them. Sometimes if they make one up and make it up, be the worst thing you can possibly make it up, it is still coming from them. Yeah. Okay. And have them have them do that. And then if they do that and you start tapping on that one, then other things start to come up, you know, from repressed memories and off you go. Yeah. 